Good morning, Grenada Caracou and Pity Martinique. We are live here from the Ministerial Complex in St. George's, and it's a wonderful morning. Trust it's beautiful wherever you are in Grenada Caracou and Pity Martinique and beyond. And it is November the 3rd, 2011, and again, another day in God's world, and we are all happy to be alive. And those of us who are healthy, certainly thank God for that. We wish those who are recuperating from an institution, uh, those who are home affected by some illness, we certainly want to wish you well this morning. We hope we can bring some cheers to you. And those of you who are celebrating a birthday today or some um, activity that is wonderful to remember, maybe a wedding anniversary, we say good morning to you, special morning to you, and certainly wish you well. And above all, we hope your friends and your colleagues join you in some celebration. And those of you who are celebrating a birthday, we hope on the job that, you know, the colleague workers will take time off and just not say happy birthday, but buy you something special. So let's go with our first guest. We want to welcome our first guest, Barbara. Help me pronounce the second name. Dengel. Dengel. Yeah, good morning yes. to you. And good morning to you and mm. everyone else as well. Good to see you. It's wonderful. I love your island. I really do. And I'm not saying this as a tourist. Right. But as someone who has a great love for nature and um, environments that are not overly developed and allowed to just be as beautiful as they are. Good. You also come from a beautiful country. You're from South Africa. I come from South Africa, yes. I think you are from uh, Quata. Uh, it's, no, it's KZ in KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal. Yes. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> um, and and the area that I live in has a very similar climate to the to the island. Good. So it's almost like coming home. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you, and pretty interesting. You and your husband are here this morning, and he, he was telling me that both of you sailed from South Africa. Yes, we sailed um, via Grenada to Europe um, earlier in the year, oh. and uh, we're very glad to have an opportunity to return. That's pretty exciting. How about sailing? Across the Atlantic, across the Pacific. How is it? In? Just two people? We were four. Four people. We sailed a catamaran. A catamaran, right. And we had the worst weather and the worst sea thinkable. <laughs> and the last week of our of our trip, mm -hmm. everything that could break and go wrong on the boat <laughs> did. <laughs> and the only thing that kept me going was uh, the techniques I've learned to deal with stress. <laughs> because a part of me was saying every, every, with every single wave that hit the boat, mm -hmm. I must have been crazy to do something like this. But it was the most phenomenal thing to be close to nature, which is very close to our hearts, right. and to realize that there's only one person, one power that rules this world, and it's not human. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, so good to have you in Grenada. And a pretty interesting career. You are, um, your profession, change management, conflict resolution, uh, relationship skills, uh, wide variety. But I noticed on this script here that it says you are an astrologer. An astrologer. What yes. is that? <laughs> well... You open up your newspaper or your magazine mm. and most people will go and read the stars Horoscope. for town. Horoscope. Yes. Horoscope. And if it says nice things about them, they say, wow, this is wonderful. And if they don't agree, they say, oh, this stuff is rubbish. <laughs> but in actual fact, astrology is a very old science because up until the year 1700, at the time of Isaac Newton, mm -hmm. astrology and astronomy were the same science. Okay. Um, astronomy, as we know, is the, the measurement and the recording of the planet's orderly movement. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks to astronomy, our satellites orbit the Earth and our space programs continue. Astrologers use exactly the same astronomical data that the astronomers use, but we have gone a step in a different direction. Astrology is first and foremost an empirical science, which means thousands of years ago people used to watch the, the stars move. Mm -hmm. um, and of course the word planet comes from the Greek word planetes, which means a wandering star. 
Right. So the ancients would see a star in a certain part of the sky and they would say, how interesting, when that star's over there, we have noticed certain things happening on the planet. And certain people born at the time when that star's over there all seem to exhibit very similar characteristics and tendencies. And so they, they conducted a research and an observation and a testing over thousands of years so that when we look at astrology now it's not just what do the stars predict for me but in fact it's it's a it's a vast body of information regarding the the psychological and spiritual and and mental and emotional makeup of humans you, I think you said it's empirical it means there's evidence that it does exist. Uh, um, some people will question that. Of course they will, oh. yes. Because um, for so many years, in the beginning of time, astrology was called a sacred sign. So it was only taught to priests and kings. Mm. Because of the understanding of the cycles of time, you know, when to call in the harvest, when the rains were going to come. This was very powerful information and was vital for, for ruling the people effectively then. And so they called astrology an occult or arcane science, which means kept away from the general public <laughs> for their own good. Today it has become a very commercial Activity. Yes, it's, it's very a very significant part of the newspaper, exactly. the media. People want to know daily yes. what is my horoscope saying. That's right. Um, you see, over the years, people have, I think everybody um, has a great need to know why they're dealing with these particular things right now. I haven't yet met anybody who say, would say, well, I wish God could take this away. They say, if I knew what this was and why it's happening and more or less how long it's going to be, I can handle it, you know. So, so that's what astrology actually is. It, it's a study of the cycles that seem to affect every single person in their life. We all go through times where things go well and things don't go well and some people will say, yes, it's just bad luck or you have displeased God or it's just chaos happening anyway um, and and for me it's been really important to look not so much at the predictive side of astrology which is of course has given it a bad name because everybody asks an astrologer for a prediction in my country one of our well-known public broadcasters is a is a sports fanatic and he always asks me on air come on Barbara tell us who's going to win the cricket and then I'd say, you, those things cannot be predicted. <laughs> what can be predicted? <laughs> what can be predicted um, are the cycles. That would, because if you were to look at the way that the planets move around the Earth, mm -hmm. they have, they take, set, each planet takes a certain amount of time to do a complete orbit of the Earth from where a person okay. is. We have the moon which does a 28 and a half day cycle. We have the sun that does a 365 day cycle, 366, if you add up all the odd minutes. Okay. Um, we have uh, the planet Mercury that in astrology rules communication, also zooms around um, the zodiac and we'll get to the zodiac as well because a lot of people can argue about that too. The zodiac signs. The zodiac signs, right. yes. In the early days, when the zodiac was desired or, or, or symbolized, where people started to see pictures in the heavens in, uh, regarding the, uh, the stars that made up each uh, collection of, of, of planets and stars in the signs, um, the zodiac, the belt of, of well, the zodiac is actually an imaginary belt of signs around the Earth equal to the Earth's um, equator. 
Okay. So if you look at the Milky Way, the Milky Way is fairly, fairly narrow. So there's a celestial horizon and there's a celestial equator and there's an Earth equator. And that's all part of astrological calculations. But what has happened over time is that the Earth has not stayed still in the same spot. The Earth has also moved. So the planetary background has shifted. So when we look at the stars today, the constellation of Aries as we see it now mm -hmm. is not in the same place as um, it was a couple of thousand years ago. So that's really very technical. <laughs> Help for viewers to appreciate mm -hmm. the um, scientific judgments that are made in whoever the writers are with the zodiac sign because there are people who listen to their horoscope on a daily basis yes. and determine and what they, they will do. Yes. And pretty, in fact, let's take um, gambling, lot, lottery. Oh, exactly. People would look at their sign and yes. say, look, Is this a good day to gamble? Am precise. I going to win? Am I going to lose? Precisely. Yes. Yes, and that is the one thing that serious astrologers take very, 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 very close to heart, is that each life is very special. Each person is a, is a unique combination, and each person has the one thing that God can't take back, and that's the gift of free will. Okay, the gift of free will, that's for sure. Yes, you see. So... Astrology, we have a maxim that says astrology, stars incline, they do not compel. So even though you may be feeling very good today, the moon might be conjunct Jupiter, which makes you feel great about everything. Um, and astrology will always say, you may be inclined to take risks. Some of them may be foolish and some of them work out. It's your choice how you decide to work with these. But humans tend to be a lazy lot. Right. And it's to... very, very rare to have somebody say, well, I really feel good about gambling and I have members in my family that gamble, so I understand that. Um, let me just wait for this urge to pass. But as I said, humans are pretty pretty lazy and they'll much rather do what feels good right now and worry about the consequences afterwards. <laughs> and that's what astrologers attempt to do is to give people guidance as to how long these cycles of optimism or depression and constriction are going to last so that the person can make better decisions for his or her life. People in Greece must be doing that. <laughs> well, <laughs> they would there's, need to uh, know that. <laughs> there's actually a very, very interesting planetary uh, 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 combination mm -hmm. that's been forming over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's the planet Saturn, which rules in, in, in astrology, limitations, consolidations, rules and regulations. Um, and that is in opposition to the planet Neptune, which rules things that are vague and cloudy, like schemes and misconceptions and idealism. So what we have here is the planet Neptune that inspires people to be spiritual, unrealistic, idealistic. Yes, it'll all come right. No, we don't really have to worry about that. And Saturn is saying, Oh, yes, we do need to worry about that. We need to know what are you going to do about that. And if you've read your local newspaper, on the front page is an article that says exactly what the planets have been indicating. What we believe and what we didn't do, hoping that it would work out well in the end, is now faced with reality that says, Ha! So what are you going to do about this now? And each of us faces the same kind of challenges in our lives. So we may find if people have perhaps children who haven't been treating them well, mm -hmm. um, and they've just allowed it to continue, and Saturn will come in and say, this is time for us to draw a boundary and put our foot down. So we may find that, that some people are going to be feeling 
confident enough in their authority in, in their particular uh, space and, and circumstances to be able to set some boundaries. The wife of a gambler may, for instance, say, this is not good enough. Either you gamble with less money, or I go and talk to your boss and I take your salary and I'll give you something to gamble with. <laughs> you know, so there are, there, are, there are various ways in which people can then make good decisions once they will understand what's happening. One thing I perhaps could mm. ask you is that there's a talk of climate change now, and yes. all that you have said seems yes. to fall in some line. Exactly. Does that have anything to do with the cycle of the climate change that we know, beginning to wander around? Or? There's, there's, an, there's an entire field of astrological study that really looks at, at the, the effects on the climate from uh, the, the planetary influences. Now, a lot of scientists will say, oh, you know, that's a whole lot of nonsense because how can planets have an effect on another planet or another human? But we humans are a bundle of electromagnetic energies. You know, we have an ECG and a, uh, our brain waves can be measured. Yeah. Um, so we really, we, we're very responsive to things that we can't always see. And we have one planet, two planets in our environment that do have a direct result on the Earth. The first one is the Moon, which affects the uh, gravitational uh, forces and gives us our tides. And the other planet that really has a major impact that they don't understand how is Jupiter, because it's a radio giant, so it radiates radio waves. And humans are very you know, they're starting to do research now about the dangers of cell phones and people living near cell phone towers tend to respond and, and their bodies are showing signs of being affected by something other than just their normal environment. So there's, there's a lot to see, but yes, to get back to your question, we have the planet Uranus, which in astrology rules dramatic and unexpected and erratic occurrences. And Uranus is moving through the sign of Pisces, and Pisces rules water and the oceans. Mm -hmm. So, if you were to take, just on a, on a, on a simple level, the, the equation of some kind of erratic energy that will affect a fluid and easily movable environment, it's possible to see that with, where the change could happen. So, as an astrologer, I haven't studied that, that part of okay. it. So, though I would love to say, yes, I believe it would have, but it's a highly specialized field, and um, uh, my field is human relationships. Okay. So, but it, it really is, um, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting the way that the planets are, are lining up because they all indicate a good couple of years where things will change on not only on a political and economical and personal level but surely on a, on a physical level as well and that's why it's so important for um, people to understand and that's why I love astrology so um, is that we sometimes don't know what we're capable of until we're tested. And astrology can help us see how long the testing is, is going to happen so that we can constantly see ourselves in relation to what's happening and kind of like keep ourselves on the right path. Let me ask you finally, how much has the commercialization of just about everything on the earth affected your profession? Well, there are a couple of really well-known astrologers. Mm -hmm. Um, some who have put their, put their predictions out there and been laughed at. Some who are just making a, a very good living out of their websites and whatever. Most astrologers are actually very good. Um, there are just the odd ones, just as we have good politicians. And <laughs> uh, there are the odd ones who've spotted the market and have gone in and exploited it. Um, and of course, on the other side, 
There are people who are just too willing to believe what someone else tells them to do instead of, you know, exercising <laughs> their mind. Too willing to believe what someone else has yes. told them. I like that yes. one. And unfortunately, that is the problem, is that a good astrologer will assist the person to begin to believe in himself and his or her potential and real skills because many people have skills and talents that they never discover because nobody's told them that they're worth looking for, that they are potential within him. So, so people who don't know what they're capable of or don't trust their own intuition and, and, and common sense are very easily led by that. But we see that in every, you know, in Africa we have our traditional, our traditional healers called Sangomas. Um, and 90% of our population will first consult with their Sangomas, their, their tribal wisdom. Uh, there are a lot of uh, traditional doctors that are now using astrology. Um, so people, we're always just looking for a little bit of guidance. And some people will just follow the ones who say, my brand of guidance is brighter, sparkler, sparklier, um, more effective, etc., etc. So yes, it's, it's a lot about marketing, but there's a vast field of astrologers who work beneath the surface, right. the ones who have regular clients, who do their best to give their clients all the information the clients need in order to make better choices for themselves. At the end of the day, that's it. No astrologer really wants to be a guru. Okay. <laughs> but we do love to see people living up to their fullest potential. Right. You have a private practice? I do, yes. Right. So that's your profession? Uh, partly, yes. Partly. Yes. Right. But it's, it's one of the things that I love. One of the things that um, give me a great deal of pleasure and is really very effective is working with people, right. doing relationship astrology and helping spouses to get on with each other, parents and children to get on with each other, and also um, for vocational guidance that children can be guided in the direction of their real, very real and innate talents and, and um, potentials. Work with schools, institutions, it's a service that you provide across um, Not to schools, because you must understand okay. schools are run by the ministries right. of education, right. and so we need something scientific for that. <laughs> um, but it ties in very, very nicely with the, um, the vocational guidance that is already given at the school. Sure. Because okay. the vocational teachers may say, well, according to the questionnaires, the child, the child has these kind of skills. But sometimes a child has other talents that eventually will become the chief choice of, of a career in life. And it's our joy when a child isn't comfortable with, with what they have been given to look at other options mm -hmm. so that the child and the parent can make good decisions for themselves. Well, I wish you the very best. You're going to be here for a little Thank while you. again. I believe I will be. All right, good. Uh, you going to seal back? You and your husband going to seal back again? I believe you will. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many days it took you? You and your... To sail from to, South Africa yeah, yeah. To, to Europe. Uh -huh. We were on the boat for just over seven months. Seven months. Yes. Um, <laughs> we, had, we sailed an old boat. Okay. So we spent a lot of time fixing. Okay. <laughs> That's very adventurous. Well, you know, there's a fine line between adventurous and just plain crazy, and okay. I haven't figured out which one is which. But it was a wonderful well, experience. I, both of you look very happy, very contented. <laughs> so I, I, I believe it would have been a wonderful experience, despite the many challenges. Well, yes. Good. Thank you. Good to have you, and let me wish you well. And uh, Barbara is... Um, from South Africa, uh, the country, the home of the great Nelson Mandela. And uh, we in the Caribbean are very familiar with uh, cricket and rugby. They didn't win the rugby this time. They were beaten by New Zealand. Or you didn't reach, you reached the quarter, semi-finals. So you were New Zealand won the World Cup. You were the home of rugby too. 
and uh, of course we do follow um, most of all is your cricket mm -hmm. right. do you follow cricket too not my mom. i must admit not really not because really. my father used to play club cricket when i was a child mm -hmm. and it was very boring <laughs> <laughs> i've seen no more well, we like it, Eddie Case. We follow Jack Callis and everybody else. <laughs> but good to have you. <laughs> Thank and you. I wish you a safe passage back and continue to enjoy Grenada. Thank it's you. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. And let me say good morning to your husband who is listening and watching us. It is 28 minutes to 8. This is Spice Morning for November the 3rd. Um, if you're leaving us now, we want to wish you well on the job. Whatever you're doing, maybe you're leaving for the beach or the gym. We certainly want to wish you well and trust that it will be a wonderful day for you.